Hello there guys, welcome to my first tutorial in quite some time. Uh, sorry about that. Life just kind of gets in the way sometimes and I wasn't really feeling like making any videos. Um, but anyways, this video is going to be my little Nazgul figure. My camera's not the best, so I'm not sure if you can see him very well. But um, anyway, so I had to make a bunch of these guys because I wanted to make the full set of nine. Um, so I'm pretty comfortable with the design and I still have a few more to make. As you can see, I only have six, so I figured why not. Um, and then there was actually quite a few of you on my Instagram page that said you'd like to see a tutorial of them. So, check the description for the band counts so that you make sure you have everything you need. So black, gray, and silver for his sword if you want to make that. So in addition to the bands that you are using in the project, I have a couple of random colored Band. So I have two purple, two green. It really doesn't matter which colors you use. These are just going to kind of be used to um, hold things together well before we attach them. Alright, so the first thing we'll have to do is we're going to make his shoulder cloak piece. I know because they're black you can't actually see very well, um, but there's these two things that come around his shoulders and then attach here. So they start in the back and then come around here. So we'll make them beforehand and then attach them to the body as we loop. So we're just going to take single black at first. And starting in the center with your loom in the offset configuration. Yes, I know this is not my rainbow loom loom. That is in a two loom configuration right now and it's kind of a pain to pull apart. Anyways, so we will start in the middle and with single black and go down four times. One, two, three, four, and then we'll go diagonally from the center down outside with a fifth band. Alright, now we'll go on the right side and we'll just go down four times. One, two, three, four. Alright, so we're going to put a cap band on this corner pin on the right side and it'll just be with um, three loops which is a little looser than normal, but it's good for what we're doing. And then I'll place crossover bands across the top two rows, so you don't have to stretch it across the full triangle, just around the um, second pins down and the third pins down. All right, so we can loom this up. So just go under the cap band, grab the top loop, loom it straight forward, and then all the way up this column. And then we'll go back to the cap band, loom this diagonal band to the side over top of itself, and then up this column normally. Alright, so grab those two of the same color tying bands, it really doesn't matter which color you use again, and just go through the two loops that are open at the top of your loom, pull through the colored band, Reclaim the end, pull the back loop through the front loop, and just tie in a loose slip knot. One that will hold, but one that you can get out, take off again later. And then tie this one as well. Alright, so you can pull this off. I did this yesterday and I like launched it across the room. That was fun. Alright, so we're going to lay the same thing out again. So starting in the middle, go down four times. And then diagonally, then on the right we'll also go down four times, two, three, four. So we'll place the crossover bands the same way we did before, around the second pins and third pins, like that. Alright, so instead of placing a cap band, we're going to place the same cap band from the first one we did. So you might notice that from the cap band to your tying bands, the two sides, like the two chains are different lengths. So the one is five long and the other is four long. So make sure the one that's five long is on your left side and the one that's four long is on the right side. So you can kind of see that the triangle is not perfectly even. So the one that's longer hold on the left side and the one that's shorter, hold on the right side. So without flipping it over, 
just stab the cap band and get those three loops on your hook and place this cap band around where we placed the cap band before on a fifth pin down on the right. So hold this back, treat it like a normal cap band, go in, pull the top loop, and loom forward. We'll do the same thing again, so we'll go in through the cap band, grab that loop, loom it diagonally back over itself, and loom forward the column normally. Whoops, that was not correct. All right, there we go. All right, and then just so that it's easier to keep track which side is which, I'm using a different color, colored band to tie these off. So go through the two loops at the top, pull the purple band through, slip knot loosely, and the other side, slip knot loosely. All right, you can pull this off now. And there, we can make our arms next. So you can see that this is sort of like an X. So the longer parts of the X should both be, um, they're both the ones that are being pinched between my pointer and middle finger, and then my thumb has the shorter ends. So anyways, it should be symmetrical like that. All right, we are going to make his arms next. Grab the gray bands. So this is just a simple chain on your hook. So take a cap band, loop it around so there's four loops, pull through, put two gray bands on your hook, pull the cap band on, reclaim the end. We'll pull two more gray bands through, like that for his hand, and then we'll pull a set of black through, another set of black, so using two bands together at all times. And then two more bands. Um, you could use another colored band to tie these off, but they're really not going to come apart. So I'm just going to slide that off and set it to the side. I'm going to do this again. So cap band, four loops, pull through two gray, two more gray, and then we'll pull through three sets of black. So two black. two black, and two black. Alright, so it should look like this, and you'll have two of these at the end. Obviously, you need two arms, or else that'd be pretty weird. Anyways, alright, so set these to the side. Now we are going to begin the body next. So it's a very, very simple layout. We're going to take two black at a time throughout the whole thing. So take two black and place them together. So starting at the top in the center, down once, and then we'll go from the second pin to the center to the second pin on either side. So that side, and this side, like this. And now what we'll do is we'll take two bands and just go down all three columns the same way. So from the second to the third, third to fourth, fourth to fifth, etc, etc. So this is pretty repetitive, um, yeah, I may fast forward through this section. Okay, so at the bottom of this side, um, you could go all the way to the bottom if you wanted to make him a little bit taller. Um, I'm just going to leave this bottom row empty. One reason, I'm missing a pin, and other reasons, I think it's um, kind of fun to have them different like sizes and heights and whatever. Um, so anyway, so you're going to go down ten times, leaving the bottom row empty. And we'll repeat this on the other two columns as well. Alrighty. Alrighty, so this is completed, so I've left the bottom row empty and placed bands all the way down to here. So we'll do the crossover bands next. So starting underneath this cross, we'll just take a single band 
and place our triangles normally all the way down. Um, yeah. So again, the body layout is quite simple um, for now anyways. Just wait till we start attaching things. Um, but even that shouldn't be too bad. Alright, so we'll stop here on the third from the bottom row. That's our last one. So to close off the bottom, take two more black and go from the outside to the inside and then from the center to the other side. Just like that. And we'll place a cap band here wrapped three or four times. I'll just do three times. Alright, so there's the body layout. Let's attach our arms. So just pick up the four loops again and attach them on the second pin on the outside two columns. So wrap all four bands around this pin and around this pin. Now we are going to begin looming. So come in through the cat band, grab the top two loops, and they should be one of your diagonal bands. So just fold them back over to where they came from and you should get nice teardrops. All right, so go through the cap band again, and this should be the ones going the center. All right, and you can actually loom all the way up the center column. So just grab the two bands and loom them forward, making sure you see the teardrop shapes all the way down. And you can put go all the way to the second pin from the top. So stop when you get here. Okay. So now we'll come back to the corner and we're only going to loom up till this pin, the third, fourth pin from the top. So once you get there, stop. So come back to the corner in through where we loom the diagonals to and then we'll just loom straight forward for a few times. I forget exactly how many, but just I'll show you where to stop. All right, and then here. All right, so there should be two more left to loom. So we've just loomed onto this pin, and so there's this band that isn't loomed, and this one that isn't loomed. All right, so you're going to take your cloak piece. And you're going to hold it so that the two longer um, parts of your X are on the top, towards the top of the loom, and the shorter ones are at the bottom. So what I'll do is, you want to do is, bleh, grab the two loops that are being held by the um, tying band, your holding band. I'm going to pull the holding band off, and then this way you also know that you have the bands the correct way, because sometimes if the band is still on, you'll grab them this way, and then once it comes off, it'll fall apart. So this way, you know you actually have the two loops on your hook. So place these, wrap them around the fourth pin from the top on the right-hand side, and then loom forward once. And then you're going to grab the other side, which should be the same color as the one you just pulled off, Wrap these two loops around the third pin from the top, go in through the same pin, grab the bottom two loops, and loom forward onto the pin with the arm. Now dig underneath the arm, grab this diagonal band, and then loom it toward the center. I feel like my hand is making really bad shadows there, sorry about that. Um, yeah, hitting my head on the lamp. Alright, so we'll come back down to this corner, and we'll do the same thing again. So loom forward one, a couple times, till you get to the fourth pin from the top. Do 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 do. Kind of push that out of the way if you have to. Okay. So now we're back. Here, so we're on the fourth pin from the top of the loom. We have two more bands in this row left to loom. So we're going to do the same thing we did before. So make sure this isn't twisted, that it's laying flat. 
and grab the two black loops, remove that holding band, wrap these two loops around the fourth pin from the top of the loom, go in through that same pin and loom forward once. Now go in through our last holding band section, grab those two black loops, wrap them around this pin, loom forward, go under the arm, loom forward. Alright, so this last one, you're going to have to dig down underneath all those bands that have been loomed onto that pin, find the bottom two, and loom forward the neck. Alright, so you can pull the body off now. But uh, before I take it all the way off, I'm just going to tie off the neck with eh, one of my holding bands. Same as we did before. Alrighty. So there you have your Nazgul body. Um, what we're going to do is you can see how your X's have made like a giant loop that you can like stick your thumb through. So hold his arms down and flip the loop over the top of his head, I guess, so that the um, cap band is in the front of his body, like so. Alright, so I'm going to tie the cap band just down somewhere in the center of his chest so that it doesn't get in the way. Um, so you flipped it around, so this is where it actually attaches on the back of his body, and then I'm just going to put my hook through the cap band somewhere and then grab a band in the center of his, or grab a couple bands in the center of his chest and then grab another band, pull it through, pull the front through the back and tie it down to his chest so it stops flopping around everywhere. Alrighty, so we're going to have to add one more thing to his body before we start the head. Um, we have the framing around his face, which kind of makes the hood of his cloak. This could be a little bit difficult to explain, so I'm going to do my best um, to show you what I mean. Um, so if you look at his neck, um, which is being held together with the holding band, underneath it are two stitches going kind of down diagonally or horizontally. Um, and each of those two stitches is made up of four bands. You're going to have to grab the top two of one of those stitches. Alright, I'll show you what I mean, because it's the black on black is really hard to see. <laughs> Alright, so Commander Wolf has his neck, and then he has two gray stitches on either side. So one wraps around this way, one wraps around this way. And each of those two stitches is made up of four bands, two on the top, and two on the bottom. You're going to want to put your hook underneath the two on the top. So you can see there's four, two here, two here, underneath, come on camera focus, and the two on the top. Like that. Okay, so we'll do this on our Nazgul. So two bands on the top, two on the bottom, put the bands through the two loops of that stitch on the top. Okay, and so then, from the cap band, there's five stitches on our top single chain making up the shoulder cloak. So count from the cap band, one, two, three, four of those single chains. Again, this is pretty hard to see, sorry about that. And grab the two outer loops of that fourth single chain. So you have four loops on your hook, Grab a single black band, pull it through those four loops, and reclaim the end. And we're going to do two more single bands, so pull through one single band, reclaim the other single band, and reclaim. And then I'm going to use one of my holding bands just to tie this off loosely for now. Alright, so we're going to repeat this on the other side. So we already did the stitch on the left hand side. So the stitch on the right hand side, 
just underneath the neck is made up of four loops, the top two and the bottom two. Go underneath the top two, and then we're going to count the fourth stitch in the cloak. So starting at the cap hand, count one stitch, two stitch, three, and four. So grab the outer two loops of that single chain that was part of the piece that we added on. Um, we made it before and added it on as we loomed. So there's four loops on your hook, pull through a single band, and reclaim. Two more single bands. One, two. So you've just done a total of three chains on either side. Grab a tying band, reclaim the end. Alright, so there is the pieces for our hood. So when we make the face, we'll attach these on as we go. The head is a slightly different shape than most figures. Um, so just pay attention to what I'm doing. Um, at the top, we're going to place two black bands from the second pin on the side to the top pin on in the center. And from the center top pin to the second pin on the right. So it's a little bit sharper than usual, but that's the shape that we want. Alright, and then on the sides, just go down once with two bands, like shown, and then we'll go two bands diagonally back in to close off this oval. Bleh. That worked well. Alright, there we go. And then we'll just go down and fill in the center. So we'll go from the center, top to second, center, second to third, and third to fourth. Alright, so we'll put one crossover band. So this is going to be a double looped band. So twist it around your fingers twice and place it around the second pins in the shape of our triangle. So it should look like this. Alright, so now grab your body. So make sure you have the body facing the right side up. So it should be the side with the cap band, not the side where the cloak attached on the back. Alright, so go through the four loops of the neck. Make sure you're grabbing the right bands because there's a couple things hanging off here. So this is the one in the center. If I can get this off, that would be nice. Okay, so wrap these four around the fourth pin from the top, sort of like what you would do for a cat band. And then now, sort of hold the body back a little bit, and then go in and grab the top two bands, which should be the bands that are going straight forward, and then just loom forward three times. Alright, so we'll go back through the fourth pin with the neck attached. And we're going to loom the diagonal bands, and then the bands going straight up. We'll go in, back through the neck, loom the diagonal bands back to where they came from, and loom forward. Okay, so now we have to attach the hood section. So these are the chains that we added after the head was loomed. So go in through the two loops at the end of the chain, and remove the holding band. So, I don't know, there was a weird thump, sorry. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so <laughs> you have the two black loops on your hook. Wrap these around the second pin on the right. Now go through, dig down, grab the bottom two, and loom this long diagonal up. Alright, so that side is done. We'll repeat the same thing on this side. So I'm going to take off this holding band, grab those two black loops, Wrap them around the second pin on the left. Dig down, grab those two black, loom the long diagonal forward. And now I'm going to pull a single black through everything on this top pin. Pull the back one through the front one, tie a slip knot. Now before I tighten it down, I'm just going to make sure things aren't twisted too bad. So pull him off, and then you can see he's kind of got like a hooded cloak, and then another part of his cloak wrapped around his shoulders. So, 
tighten up the slip knot holding his head on, and then you can hide this slip knot in, and then also this slip knot in. So, last but not least, we have to make his sword. Um, so in order to do this, I tie some of my bands into a knot. Um, so I can actually tie a knot in a band pretty easily on my hook, but any time I've tried to teach someone how, they've gotten pretty confused, so I've kind of given up, and I'll just show you how to do it on the loom. So to do a knot on the loom, take a silver band, stretch it between two pins, but so that there's a cross in the center. And now, grab the bottom section, pull it out, twist it over itself again, and wrap this around both pins again. So now you're just going to buy or grab the bottom section of the cross on either side, so the twist in the center on the bottom. Grab the very, very bottom band, pull it around the pin and set it in the center, just like you were doing like a single cross, um, like a fishtail on two pins. Alright, and then we're going to do this again, so a band over two pins so that there's a cross in the center, pull the band out, stretch it around both pins, and then grab the bottom section of the cross on both sides, pick it up, drop it in the center. Alright, so you're going to need three knots, one for the tip of the sword and two for the cross guards. So pick up two of these, so just grab both ends of it, so one end and the second end, and then one of them you can just push down over the fat part of your hook to keep it out of the way for now. And now I'm going to chain on my hook with double looped silver. So wrap the silver around your hook twice, pull the knotted band onto it, and reclaim the end. We're going to put seven double looped silver on. So that was one. This is two. Three. As you go, um, try to keep the um, bands centered as you pull them on. So once you pull it on, make sure it's in the middle um, so that it just kind of doesn't get a banana bend in it or else it kind of looks a little funny. So just to keep the blade relatively straight uh, to the best of your ability. Yep. Alright, last one. Cool. Okay, so now push this knotted loop back up into the working section of your hook and pick up the two loops of your last knotted band. So now we're going to pull a double looped silver through everything on our hook. So pull through the two loops of the knotted band, the four loops of the blade, and the other two of the cross, cross guard. Alright, now I'm going to take black for the handle, so I'm going to double loop a black, pull it through, and then I'm going to do another black, I'll do three black for the handle. Alright, so there's my three black, and then I'm going to pull a single silver, so I'm not going to double loop it, pull it through those four loops, and slip knot it. Alrighty, so to hide this lovely tying band, I'm going to go in through the center um, black stitch, so I'm just stabbing my hook through it from the right to the left, and then I'm going to pull this loop down through, but not so hard that I flip the top stitch over. Alright, so now it's coming out the right hand side, and so I'm going to flip my sword over so it's sticking out the left. I'm going to stick my hook through this last um, black band, so the one that's closest to the cross guard. Grab the silver band, and pull it through to the right hand side. If you're left handed, you might have to do it the opposite way. Alright, so now this loop is kind of sticking out the side of the black band. So what I'm going to do is go underneath two of the silver loops that are closest to it and just pull it through so that it's kind of coming out the center of the um, silver stitch. 
and then I'm going to grab the loop and just pull it over the sword blade like that. Alright, so it should be relatively secure and hidden like that. Um, I'm sure there's other ways to do it, but that's just the way I found easiest. Alright, and now I'm just going to take my Nazgul and the last black, uh, gray stitch for his hand. I'm just going to stretch it out a little bit and push the sword handle into his hand so that he's holding it like this. Rawr. Alright, so there is your completed Nazgul. I hope that you enjoyed making him. And whether you're making, whether or not you're making a full set of nine, or if you just wanted one for fun. Um, I hope you liked it, and be sure to check out my other Star Wars videos. Um, also, let me know if there are a specific character that you would like me to make. Um, I did have a request for Sabine Wren, so I hope my next um, figure that I do will be her. Um, but if there is a Star Wars character, a Lord of the Rings character you would like me to make, um, let me know and I'll do my best to make it happen. It might not be anytime soon, but um, just as time allows. And again, um, I've been definitely a lot more active on my Instagram page, so if you want to see more of what I've been up to recently on Instagram, I am Mythical Loomer. Um, I'll probably leave a link in the description. And again, feel free to ask me any questions and requests um, there. I do enjoy talking to people through Instagram as well. I hope that you enjoyed making a Nazgul with me. Um, have an awesome rest of your day, and see you later. Bye.